Welcome back to the Air Mobility Command Museum. Today we're going to do a walk around of the Waco CG4A Assault Glider, also known as the Hadrian. Over 13,000 of these gliders were built during World War II and were the principal assault gliders for the U.S. Army in both the European Campaign and the Pacific Campaign. Now these gliders were pulled behind uh, aircraft such as the C-46 Commando and the C-47 Skytrain. And each glider could carry up to 13 fully loaded troops or, as you can see here, a jeep or a howitzer. Now the glider itself is a very light construction. It's got steel tube construction with uh, wood and fabric, and that's about it. Now along with paratroopers, this is the primary airborne tool of World War II for the U.S. Army. And each airborne division had one uh, glider infantry regiment that was assigned to it. And as you can see, as we walk around, you can see the, the construction. Now in the back here, you will actually see a, a drag chute. So once the glider lands, it can deploy this uh, drag chute to slow the uh, glider down. Now believe it or not, the British pilots or the British glider pilots really didn't like this glider because it was just too good of a glider. It had a really flat glide slope, so it was really hard to get this glider over hedges and trees at the edge of fields to get it in. But otherwise, it's quite successful. But the operation as a whole is quite... Uh, hazardous as you can imagine and many of these gliders crashed. Now the gliders themselves could be recovered. Thousands were actually re snatched back into the air if they were still serviceable and that was uh, with a, a trapeze system. Up on top there you can see the pitot tube on the left and in the center you'll actually see the, the cable rope disconnect mechanism and if you th uh, look back at the C-47 it's absolutely identical. One of the questions we get here at the Air Mobility Command Museum about the glider is, how do you get the Jeep off the glider? Well, that's kind of easy to explain. After the glider has landed, the crew is going to prop up the tail. And once the tail is propped up, it lowers the nose down to the ground. The crew then goes ahead and opens up the nose itself. So there's a hinge at the top, and that whole nose hinges up like a big garage door. Now, once the nose is opened up, the Jeep is driven out. Now one of the neat little features of that system is that the Jeep is actually attached to the nose opening system. And there's a pulley at the back. So if you look very carefully, you'll see that pulley attached to a cable. So once the Jeep starts driving out, it automatically opens up the nose and it's a, a pretty quick operation. And if there's anything these glider infantrymen are trained about is to get off the glider as quick as possible because they're a big target out in the middle of an open field. Now these gliders today are quite scarce. There's only a handful left. Uh, the reason for that was because it was not a big demand for gliders after World War II. And the fact that they're made primarily of wood and steel tube and fabric, well, they weren't going to hold up very well after all. So we're very lucky to have one here today. Another thing this uh, glider represents is the hard work that the volunteers here at the Air Mobility Command Museum do each and every day. Whether it's giving tours, manning our shop, or doing restoration work. We have 130 volunteers here that work hard each and every day to make sure this, op uh, this museum can actually operate. So we're really proud of them. So thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed the walk around of the Waco CG4A Assault Glider. You have a good day and thank you very much.